Hi, this is Mr. Bourne, and this tutorial is going to be about spreadsheets, making custom charts and graphs. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to use Excel's cell formatting to make custom formatted charts and graphs, and how to save them as PDF files. What you're going to end up with is something that looks like this on a piece of paper. Uh, you can have a custom axis incremented however you want, and a custom y-axis incremented however you want. As I zoom in here, you can see that uh, the cells between here are like a nice little dot pattern, and there's a, a nice strong um, looking axis here that separates the grid from everything else. And so this can be used in lab reports, taking down data, passing out, having people collect information and show things um, how they um, might change over time. Now, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to be using Microsoft Excel, although I'm pretty sure that this can be done with any modern spreadsheet program. Okay, so run the program. And what you'll want is an Excel workbook, just a nice basic workbook here. Okay, so let's begin by incrementing from 1 to 25, going from, uh, going from the bottom to, the, to up right here. Now we could uh, put in these numbers manually, but there's a fast way to do it. If you begin typing a 1 and then a 2, uh, Microsoft Excel is pretty smart at understanding um, the sequence here. And then when you select both of them, they'll be surrounded by a blue box with a little anchor here at the side. And when you hover your cursor over it and you click down and you drag up, you'll see here that Microsoft Excel will quickly increment how you want it to go. And then we can get from 1 to 25 going up. Now let's say uh, that this is um, in thousands and we want a dollar sign in front of every one of these. Select the entire column of, of numbers, go to the format menu, select cells, and up here under number let's say that this is currency. Now we don't want there to be um, a decimal point with two zeros after it because then it'll just seem like one dollar, two dollar, three. So we're going to change decimal places to zero and then hit OK. And now we've got a dollar sign in front of our numbers like this. Let's just make it look pretty by centering the text in the cell and making the cell a little bit and making the column a little bit more narrow like that. OK. Now um, let's work on putting increments of date across the bottom. And here's how we do that. So let's go down here to the cell B26. And let's say we want every Friday for the year 2014. And so that means that we're going to have 52 entries all along the bottom. I'll begin by putting in the date 1 slash 3 slash 1 4. And if you select this and then choose Format Cells, you'll see that uh, Microsoft Excel is smart enough to detect that what you're putting in is a date. And it understands this as a date. That's a good thing. There are two ways to um, make to quickly put increments of a week across the bottom axis. Uh, one way is to say um, to put in a formula saying hey take the previous cell add seven days to it and then that'll be the new date. So we could put in equals B26 plus seven that would be seven days for one week. Hit enter and we see that we've got the tenth here and then we can do a copy and paste or we can select a whole range and we could say paste and you'll notice that what we've got here is increments of one week and that's pretty slick. Um, the second way to do this, so the other way to uh, do this is very similar to what we saw with um, um, how we put together the uh, the y-axis. You can put the uh, the week following 1 slash 10 slash 14 and select both cells and then it knows that it's uh, seven days apart and as you move this out and you can see here as the the cells progress from left to right the the date that it's putting in they're exactly seven days apart and this is what I'm gonna use to skip ahead and have it go all the way to the end of the year September October November December and whoop overshot the mark a little bit the last date in the year 2014 is December 26th, so I release, and there we go. 
it goes all the way out to column BA. And um, here I'm coming back to the, the, the front part of the sheet. So right now we've got two problems. We've got um, dates, which are um, too wide, and um, they're not the right orientation either. We, we kind of need to make everything a little bit skinnier. So um, here's what we're going to do. Um, we can select all the dates, and like so, and going up to cell formatting, so choose the menu format cells, and we've got this tab here called alignment, and we are going to tip everything and rotate it by 90 degrees, and so now we see here that the dates are um, written vertically, and the column headings are still well, let's make sure that the column headings are uh, uh, selected. And if we select all of the column headings, we can make all of the columns skinnier simultaneously by selecting the columns and then moving the cursor in that little crack in between each column and then moving it like this and then making it skinnier like so. And now look at this. Now it's thinner and looks like we're going to be able to print it um, all on one page. Now we don't have the page separation guide marks yet, so let's go here to File and then choose Print uh, Page Setup. And by default, it's Portrait, so it'll print the tall way. So we want it to be Landscape, so it'll print the wide way. And I'm going to select OK. And now it might be hard for you to see as you're watching this video, but there are printing guide marks here that are showing us um, how much it'll print. Um, on a single piece of pa paper. Now it looks like it cuts off here at October 17th and indeed when I go to file and choose print uh, we see here that it's one of two pages it only goes from the beginning of the year to October and then as I advance to the next page we've got this extra here and we don't want that we want it all on a single page so hit cancel and now what we're gonna do is select all the columns and we have to make them just a tiny bit thinner. So maybe here we can start by making this a little bit thinner and each little cell should become thinner but you know what it's kinda hard to do this because everything's getting small on my screen so here's a nice tip go to view choose zoom and let's make everything a little bit larger to see we're gonna increase the magnification from 100 to 150 percent and like so and now everything's a tad bit bigger I can select all my columns, B through AC, and I can adjust it, and the width is going to become a little bit smaller like this. Whoops, here, let me do that again here. Select all of the, the columns with the dates, and there we go. I want everything to be on the left of my nice little blue dotted line here. So I'll make it a little bit thinner. Two more to go, just a tad bit. There we are. Okay. So now we've got them all fitting on one page, but oh no. Now it looks like the the dates are kind of cut off and they're not nicely printed. Well, that's because the font size is a little bit too large. So let's select all of those cells with the dates in it, and we'll change it from Calibri size 12 to size 10 and well that's not good let's do size 9 there we go size 9 ought to do it just right okay we're nearly there so um, now what we want to do is we want to have a nice little um, grid separation between you know the dates and um, the incrementing values here on the y-axis now we can see it here in the actual spreadsheet but when we print it it won't be there, it'll just be one big white blank space. So what we need to do is select the range of cells um, from the very end, first date to the end date and all the way up here like so. So the entire space here inside the grid is selected. Select Format, choose Cells, and now we're going to choose the Border tab. Now on the right, we've got different border styles like dashed lines and thick lines and thin lines. We're going to choose the thinnest possible line 
and then choose inside and outside every single cell and then press OK. And now we've got an actual border in between each of these cells. One final touch to have a nice little black border is to choose the bottom row right next to the dates like this and then we're going to select the cell formatting to have a thick black line on the bottom. Go to format cells and here I'm going to choose thick black border and just click here right on the bottom and then click on OK and now we've got a nice thick border on the bottom and we want a thick border separating the dollar values here with the rest of the the grid so select the column going all the way up like this and we're gonna select thick black border on the left go to format cells and like whoops thick black border on the right I'm sorry on the left and then click on OK and now we've got it all right one final little thing to do here is to go to file and save as and I strongly recommend you choose PDF because how it uh, looks on the PDF um, will be exactly how it looks on paper and so you can just call this uh, grid one or something like that select save and and here is grid one as seen in Adobe Acrobat now when it's um, um, reduced view to so you can see it on your screen it might look like oh no it, it didn't get all the lines but if you magnify then, then you got something really nice here just look around and there you go so you can make this for science projects or financial projects or or whatever you want keeping track of, of various I don't know students and their achievements however you want to do this and this is printed to paper and it's portable and easy to use so there you go Hope that helps.